This is a huge day for me and my channel. 2003 NASCAR Cup Series champion, two-time Daytona 500 winner, and perhaps most impressively, my all-time favorite NASCAR driver, Matt Kenseth, joins Out of the Groove. How's it going you guys? My name is Eric and welcome to a very special episode of Out of the Groove. If you've been watching my channel for any significant amount of time, it probably became clear fairly quickly that Matt Kenseth was my favorite driver. I've been watching NASCAR since about 2004 and pretty much from the beginning, Matt Kenseth in the black and yellow DeWalt colors was my guy. I traveled all the way up to Wisconsin last summer because Matt Kenseth was making his return to the racetrack in his home state and I wanted to see him race in person one final time and I got to see him win the Slinger National for the eighth time, so I'm a pretty big Matt Kenseth fan. And with the shocking announcement earlier this week that Matt Kenseth would be returning to the NASCAR Cup Series, I had the great opportunity, thanks to the great folks at NASCAR and Chip Ganassi Racing, to speak with Matt Kenseth, and I got to record an interview for you guys. So let's go now to my very special interview with Matt Kenseth. Enjoy, y'all. I sure did. Welcome to Out of the Groove. My name is Eric Eastep. This week, I have the great pleasure of being joined by the one, the only, Mr. Matt Kenseth, coming out of retirement to drive for the Chip Ganassi Racing in the number 42 car. How's it going today, man? Thanks for being here. It's going good, but I never use the R word. I never officially retired. I just was taking, I was just resting. That's fair. And uh, a lengthy hiatus, you might say. Resting. Well, it's really exciting to have you back in NASCAR. I was as surprised as anyone, probably more surprised than most people, to see uh, you returning uh, to Chip Ganassi Racing, of all places. Uh, what was Chip Ganassi Racing's pitch uh, when they first called you? Oh, man. I don't know if there's a lot of a lot of pitch, necessarily. Just, um, you know, obviously, I know it's a it's a great team. They they were running pretty well. And, um, you know, they just, kinda, they just need, needed a driver. So, um you know, it was a great opportunity for me that the timing uh, was actually uh, was really good for me. Um, obviously, we've all been all been home for, for quite some time, but I've had a, had a had a full year off and had a great year and was really happy and had a lot of fun with the family. Uh, but certainly I'm well rested. I was getting itch to go racing again. And it was just a really good opportunity at a very uh, at a very interesting time. And just um, just one I didn't want to pass up. I just wanted to figure this was another shot for me one more time to get in some good equipment and um, we'll give it a try. Have you been watching NASCAR much over the last year or so? Have you kept up with it at all? You know, I have. I can't say I've watched every lap of every race, but I've, um, I've, I still keep up with it, still watch some of the races and uh, um, try to keep up with what's going on. I thought it'd be interesting maybe to like quiz you on like certain numbers and see who, if you know who's driving what car now, but, but that's okay. We'll, we'll save that for some other time. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> You mentioned a second ago that you uh, you started to feel an itch to kind of start racing again uh, before this all happened. Uh, what are you most excited about in returning to uh, to the racetrack? You know, really just to get to work with the team. I think I think not racing. You know, the thing I miss the most is not necessarily driving a race car, but it's just being part being part of a team. You know, being part of a group that's going out and trying to be the the best at, at their own craft and and being one link to that chain to try to get the whole thing. You know to work and to try to win and, and, you know, to try to beat all those other guys that are, that are so great. So I think just, just being part of that is, uh, I think, you know, what I missed, you know, they, you know, going to the, going to the shop yesterday and starting to get fit in the seat and um, getting to meet people and getting to talk to them about going to the track and what our plans are going to be. Just, just all that around it. Um, you know, I just, I, I really missed, um, really missed the people and I really miss being, being part of a group like that. You're joining your former teammate, Kurt Busch. Uh, was he at all instrumental in bringing you into Chip Ganassi Racing? Uh, certainly. I talked to Kurt a couple times and, you know, picked his brain just, just about a few things, you know, about, about the organization and maybe some of his experiences there. But certainly having Kurt as a teammate was a was a big part of the decision-making process as well. I think especially with it, you know, you always need good teammates, people you can trust, people you can talk to, people that um, can help you and you can help them. Um, all that kind of stuff. And I knew Kurt, you know, is, is that guy. I've worked with him in the past and um, racing comes first for him. He uh, always has put in a ton of effort, um, you know, has always been very, very helpful, uh, willing to help and do all those kind of things. So, I mean, certainly that was, uh, that was, that was, that weighed into the decision-making process, process is having, you know, the right guy there that I felt like, um, you know, I could, I could work well with. 
Yeah, so you're driving a Chevrolet for the first time in your cup career. Uh, you've already driven for the other two manufacturers. I guess they're still in NASCAR. But what's the biggest difference when switching from Ford to Toyota and then now Toyota to Chevy? Is it the people, the cars? What's the most notable difference between the manufacturers? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure some of the, you know, the, the cars are, you know, a little bit different, obviously, the engines and the aero and, and all that stuff. But I think a lot of it is the people, uh, the engineering, you know, how they how they go about it. Um, you know, the different, different things that they provide and how valuable that is. So I think that's, um, you know, the, that's probably most of it. A lot of the cars themselves are fairly similar, but, you know, certainly the engines and the, the, the aero piece of it. And then um, and I think more of the, you know, the engineering and the, the tools that they give you and simulation, like all that kind of stuff, just the, the tools that they give the teams to help them be successful. Yeah, so it was also announced just uh, just a few minutes ago, actually, that uh, NASCAR is planning to return May 17th at Darlington. But since we're still a couple weeks away from real racing, are you much of an iRacer? Do you plan on maybe jumping into the, the Pro Invitational Series or anything like that? No, I have never done that. Um, I haven't really watched any of the video games. I don't mind playing video games. I just think it's weird for me to watch one. So I uh, watch somebody else play it. But I mean, I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know a lot about it. I've never really done it. Um, you know, I know a few people that do have the setups that have offered for me to go try it. I don't know that I'll join a, a, an actual race, but um, if it's a tool I think can help me at all, I'll certainly go spend some time on it and, um, and see if there's some things there that can help. Definitely. Uh, so once we do get real race cars back on the real race track, it sounds like there's going to be little to no practice time. Uh, is there anything that you're going to be able to do between now and then to kind of make sure you're comfortable and ready to go racing once the uh, cars are back on the track? That's tough without being in the cars. I mean, I think the biggest thing you do is you try to be as prepared as you can physically and then try to be prepared as you can mentally, you know, try to study, you know, as much data as you can, watch some, watch all the last year's race film from Darlington and try to learn what you can from that. Um, talk to, talk to your teammate as much as you can, maybe look through his notes from last year in the car and driving their notes from last year or the last couple of times there. And, um, you know, try to, try to gain as much knowledge as you, as you possibly can. I, I know it's always different than, than doing it and getting on the track and, and getting the experience. So uh, I think you just go as prepared as you can. And uh, I think, you know, Chad will have the guys ready in the car ready and, and um, I'm sure he'll be ready to adjust to whatever I need during the race and just go there and, uh, um, you know, hope for the best on the start. You've never driven the 550 uh, horsepower, you know, the high downforce rules package in NASCAR. So what kind of challenges do you think that's going to present to you when you get back in the race car? Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be some different challenges there for sure. I mean, I imagine that it's going to be a lot different in the front than it is part way back than it is all the way back when you get cars with um, that much uh, spoiler and stuff on the areas. It gets really dirty toward the back of the pack, and I'm sure the farther back you get, the more challenging it is. So I think it's going to be important, uh, like it always is, to try to try to you know have track position and keep track position. And, and again, not being in a car for that long or never being in that car and those rules – it's going to be hard to keep track position early in the race. So you're going to have to, uh, you know, try to adapt and figure out how to work traffic. I think the best you can and try to try to understand how you need to drive uh, that particular rules package to get the, the, the most you can out of it. Mm -hmm. So you're at 39 career cup series wins right now. You're just one away from, from Mark Martin. Uh, what would it mean to you to possibly get into the 40 win club this year? Yeah, I mean, the more you, the more you have, the better, right? So you always want to win. I mean, I, whatever the number was before, you always want to make it bigger. So, um, you know, certainly, uh, certainly want to go win. If you didn't think that you had any chance of winning, it's not an opportunity that I would have took or probably would have been offered to me. So I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like Chip is expecting a, a winning effort, and I, I know I am too. I mean, it might, it might take some time. It might never happen. You never know what's going to happen in the sport, but certainly. Uh, Certainly, that's the goal. You know, if your goal isn't um, to win, and that's not what you're you're working at, then then you're in the wrong sport or, or shouldn't be doing it. So, I mean, that's certainly uh, certainly our goal. I think that's certainly long term what we're aiming at is trying to uh, trying to win and, and try to be up front each and every week. Very matter of fact. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so, obviously, it is early. I know you haven't even been back in the race car yet, uh, but do you see yourself racing beyond 2020 in NASCAR, or do you think this is kind of this might be it? Well, three weeks ago, I didn't even see myself racing in 2020, so that's hard to say. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'd say you never know what can happen. I mean, I don't have any uh, really, you know, you know, I don't really have anything right now that I'm, uh, you know, 
thinking what's going to happen for sure. I think we just got to let it play out and see where it goes. I don't, um, I don't have a feeling one way or another about 2021 at the moment. Um, at the moment, my focus is more short term, trying to get ready for for Darlington and trying to put in the best effort I can there, learn as fast as I can, and uh, and hopefully get up to speed. And then when that's over, we'll look forward to going back to Darlington and trying to do better than the first time, no matter how we do the first time. So I, I think right now my outlook is much more short term and trying to get up to speed and, and hopefully start getting some results. And I think as you get into the meat of the season, I think that um, – you know, the future probably becomes more clear to me and, and probably to chip to what everybody wants or um, you kind of address it probably farther on down the road. But I think for right now, it's just uh, short term trying to get acclimated and trying to get up to speed. Certainly. Well, definitely crazy circumstances surrounding all of us right now. But uh, thank you so much for your time today, Matt. I've Like I said earlier, I've been a big fan of yours for years, so it really means a lot to have you on my show. Best of luck this year. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Whew, again, a big thank you to Matt Kenseth, as well as all the great folks at Chip Ganassi Racing and NASCAR who helped set that up. Uh, that was really special to me, and I hope you all enjoyed enjoyed that, and hopefully that put as big a smile on your face as it did me when I was uh, when I was recording it. I tried to be as professional as possible, of course. I didn't want to make a scene or anything like that. You know, guys, I'm a big Matt Kenseth fan. I have a Matt Kenseth cardboard... Co I forgot, he's right there. Oh, God. I hope Matt Kenseth... Did oh, Matt didn't see him. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. But I, anyway, I'm a big Matt Kenseth fan, and that was really cool to get to talk to Matt uh, a little bit about what led him to returning to NASCAR this year and what his expectations are for the coming uh, for the coming season, which it sounds like could get restarted here very soon. But I hope you all enjoyed that, because I certainly did. This wouldn't be possible without the support I have gotten from each and every single one of you over the over the many years I've been doing videos on YouTube. Really, moments like these have me feeling very introspective. I've been doing videos on YouTube now for nearly nine years, and obviously my content has changed a lot during that time. I've changed a lot during that time. I started doing videos in middle school. I'm about to graduate college. It's been a long journey. I've changed a lot. The videos have changed a lot, uh, and you guys have continued to support me. You guys have continued to, to find some sort of joy, some sort of entertainment, some sort of a value value in the content I've produced and for that I am extremely grateful. It just means a lot to me that my videos have been able to reach out to so many different people and your support has allowed me to do a lot of things just in the last year or so that I never thought would be possible. I mean, I'm just a fan. I'm just a huge racing fan, much like pretty much all of you. I've been really fortunate to kind of develop a little bit of an audience here on this platform and that's granted me some really cool opportunities, but when it's all said and done, I call the show out of the group because I'm just a fan like anyone else. I get my news from pretty much every from pretty much the same place everyone else does. I started the show because I really had very few people to talk about NASCAR things with. I mean, I didn't have any friends that watched NASCAR, so I wanted to start this show to create an online conversation. I know we're not able to really directly have a back and forth conversation, but I read most all of the comments y'all post on these videos, the tweets you send me, things you send on my Instagram, all sorts of social media, and this has kind of, for the last several years, been my way of catching up on all the NASCAR conversation I feel like I was missing throughout the many early years of my life when I was a fan. and. Nobody around me knew half of anything about NASCAR. But it's moments like these, getting to interview my all-time favorite driver on the show, uh, that really have me sitting back and just unbelievable, just thinking about how amazing uh, this journey has been the last few years. And it's all because of your support. So thank you all a ton for helping my dreams come true. Uh, and uh, I really can't thank you all enough for that. But I'll do my best. Thanks, guys, for the support. Thank you for watching this video. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe if you are new. As always, I also have to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. You guys go the extra mile supporting uh, the videos, supporting the channel. I uh, hope you enjoy that interview because uh, it's because of the support of guys. Thank you guys that I'm able to do things like that and dedicate as much time to this uh, YouTube stuff as, as I do. So thank you for the support a ton. One more time, a big thank you to Matt Kent of Chip Ganassi Racing, everyone who set that up. That was really special. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. Uh, but that's all I've got. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Sounds like we got a lot of news to perhaps catch up on this weekend. So you'll probably be hearing from me sooner rather than later. But thank you all for the support. Stay safe out there. Have a great weekend, everybody.